welcome to the Next in Time podcast, where we explore the fascinating depths of how people have the potential of impacting the world with the mission and vision of their project. Join us on this audio journey as we uncover the hidden gems of one's vision, delve into thought-provoking discussions of why they're pursuing it, and see how they're going to make an impact. If you're a curious person, this podcast is your go-to destination. Hey everyone, welcome to the Next in Time podcast. I'm your host, ST, and today our guest is David Van Beekum. He is the co-founder and creator of Tweeba, the world's first social TV network for small businesses and influencers. He is looking to transform your television into a social network, which is very interesting. So Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're able to come on and be able to see why you're looking to tra- make your TV into kind of like a social networking platform. Yeah, yeah, this has been a, a kind of um, a multi-year bit, uh, you know, idea, and then growing the idea and running it through a patent, and uh, it's been a while, but we're we're finally getting going here. So, how's the patent process going for you? Patent process is a complicated process. Um, you know, I thought in the very beginning that it would be something where I could write out all of my claims and then I could submit it and nobody else would have it. Uh, but it takes years. It actually takes, I think we're on the second and I think it's two and a half years now, finally at the patent office. And they're, you know, they're saying, well, it could look like this one or it could look like this. And they're very, they're not exactly the same. They're not even close to it. But I think to a patent, um, uh, what do they call those guys? The, the at the patent office examiner, the patent examiner, he's trying to make sure that we're not infringing on each other's, you know, patents. So they have to bring up all these, hey, is this the same as somebody on a subway who's trying to sell jeans on a on a screen? It's like, no, no, we're not we're not like that. <laughs> so it's a like little bit complicated. How, like how much does do you spend normally on getting a patent? Well, it's like uh, probably the same same thing as in a car. You know, you can get a used car, you can find somebody to just write a generic patent for fairly cheap, and then you can go to to the higher end patent attorneys where they are trying to build out a case when they create your patent because they want to deal with you in the future. So in 10 years and you have something coming at you, guess who you're going to hire is them. So it can range anywhere from thousand dollars, five thousand to twenty thousand, thirty thousand, and I would imagine even more than that. Got it. And so, in a way, you are trying to create like advertising opportunities for local communities for everyone. In a way, yeah, yeah. It's it. I'm cr- trying to create something that does not exist out there right now, which is advertising on TV for the generic person. If you don't have five grand in your pocket, burning a hole, saying I just want to try putting myself on TV, if you want to throw a couple dollars at it tweeva is the network that i want you to try that with and why is it that you are the ultimate guy <laughs> oh why the ultimate i don't know if i'm the ultimate guy but <laughs> <laughs> no no what i meant was like why no what i meant was why is it that they want to be a part of tweeva like you know is it because it's more affordable compared to advertising costs in other areas or what oh yeah yeah so uh so Tweeva is, uh, what I'm trying to do is create an efficiency in a marketplace, just like um, the electric car, which is 10 times more efficient than a normal car, right? That's how they created the Tesla. And then you have your LED light bulb, that's 10 times more efficient and it runs, I don't know, maybe double or triple the time. And you have all these little efficiencies that are being created. Electric skateboards are so efficient in the way that they run, they go miles, but nobody's really touched that TV advertising yet. No one's made it where I can walk up to my restaurant TV and it's like, like put five dollars in and show up on TV. So if I can create that efficiency and allow everybody to um, advertise their either business or I mean we're going, we're talking about like you could be a dog walker, you could be a babysitter, you could be, you could be in lawn care. Anything of those smaller businesses could finally advertise their business on TV. You're try, you're really trying to revolutionize, making it much more cost effective for a lot of people who want to get on yes. TV in a way. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I've noticed one thing that a lot of people who can't get on TV, especially ones who can't you know, either get their 15 minutes of fame on TV or get themselves on a commercial or get themselves on even on a basic video to be showcased on TV, that they can't really get the uh, they 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 don't have that opportunity for their 15 minutes of fame. 
thing. Yeah, yeah, you, you can for that small amount of time, and then when it's up, and the whole community, or I wouldn't say community, but the whole TV station has moved on to a new story, which they have to do uh, to sell more advertising to get those viewerships, you're gone, you're out. And so what we are focusing on is Tweeva being the local TV channel for the city, and that enables community experts to be grown out of the network. So take, for instance, local chiropractor in every single city we're going to need content we're going to need um uh you know videos images stories of chiropractor for every single city right in every single town so it's going to create community experts that don't just live for 15 minutes of fame they're going to live for a lifetime of this is how you do this or why do you have back problem do you lean over in your car when you drive well make sure that back you know your spine is straight right these are little things that i've learned over time from experts but they don't have TV advertising. So if I can help them in that area, um, you know, they get branded. So let me get to know more about you as like as an individual. So I believe you, since you seem so passionate about TV and like really revolutionizing, were, were you considered someone in, like, were you, were you a big fan of TV growing up or what's your background? No, but I'm a nerd. So, I mean, TVs, I've been in front of TVs and computer screens my whole life. Uh, but this just seemed to be a piece of the pie that we kind of focused on for a while because we found that there was no efficiency created there yet. But my background was in computers. Um, I grew up, I was homeschooled from second and a half grade and my uncle, my dad had computers, um, but my uncle had given me one at like, I think when I was eight or nine, like a 286, 16 megahertz, you know, DOS based computer. Wait, what year was this? Oh my goodness. I don't even remember, but it was, had to be early nineties. And Eddie okay. gave me a dot matrix printer. So I just, it was like, this is incredible. And so I, that's where my love of computers came because I got to spend so much time on it. And then my dad worked in electrical contracting and he did audio for our church. So he'd give me an old Mackie 16 channel audio board, two VCRs, a record player, audio cassette tapes. Rec I had this studio in my room, you know, when I was young. So I was always in electronics i was always in semi i wouldn't say broadcasting in the in the large realm but i love the music and video and computers so this is kind of it's incredible how all these pieces come together in a project and then you're like wow i'm using all these little things like you never expected to use them you're just like oh that was a phase here yeah that was a phase there <laughs> but yeah it's a kind of a combination of everything so i believe it in your going forward, you were like a combination of a digital marketing guru, a startup enthusiast, and a tech expert. And yep. what was what were each of these journeys like for you? Well, you, each one kind of w was when they were needed. I focused on those specific areas. So some of them were building a database that held 39 million records, and we needed to get that query down to a half a second. And so you you figure out how to optimize the record set. And then we got to marketing. It was how do we we figure out how to track open rates of people who opened emails. How do we get the emails out fast as possible? Um, what times do they open them up using AI to, to figure out those pieces? So it really depends. I mean, I could probably go for a while on each one of those, but what, what I've focused on is when I needed the specific piece, I could either go to an expert for it, or I could research and find the best um, channel to get to the end, learn it, figure it out, and then find somebody to place in that spot. At least I, I knew, you know, 80% of it. And now you're currently living in Florida trying to get this company started. Yes, yes. So I grew up out of New Jersey. Um, and then 18, I think 18, 19, I moved down. So it's been a it's been a while now. I'm cold when it's 80 degrees, not 80, 75, you know, so I, I got to be Florida, Floridian by now. <laughs> how uh, So how long have you been living in Florida? Um, Probably about 20 years. Yeah, so you're less than that. You're, so you were like the original snow. Does it the uh, you were the original young snowbird? Yeah, that's that right. It's, to Florida, because you know. Well, that's snowbirds. Is you got to have a place. I think in both. Like you know, you go down to one spot and then you come back for the for the winter. So do you? Because you, know, I've always I've always heard that it's always the older people that move down to Florida. You know, yeah, who yeah. just like want to escape from the north and enjoy the nice warm weather in the south. Yeah. And you were like one of the one of the people who just moved down there as a young and then just made your way into the. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'd love, I'd love to have a, a house down here at the beach, and maybe one in upstate New York. You know, that would make me happy, and and maybe like a private jet or something. Like, yeah. a lot of Floridians really love their private jets. I, I get feel. <laughs> 
It wanted it yeah, was. I, I, I think that one thing I've always felt whenever I when whenever I go down to these cli- these humid climates or like hot humid climates, it's just like your mind just becomes very. It, it's no longer the uh, calm. It's like you want you want to be the person doing things, getting a lot of like acquiring a lot of stuff. Everything you just want, everything right in front of you. Kind of you just, your desire to have everything just skyrockets whenever you go down into a warmer climate. Like when you're up in a colder climate, I was I was up in Ohio earlier, and I was like, I just want to just be, I just want to be left alone. I just want some nice, a couple of things. But now I have moved to a warmer climate. It's just like, okay, I want the world now. <laughs> Yep. Yep. You, you get to be that way because you're, you're like, your body is hot and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's the, you're not cold and, you know, holding, like trying to hold your heat in. I think, I think that might be part of it. I mean, there's, I would say there's, there's probably two types of people though. Some people very, they relax when they're warm. So they just kind of get like, okay, I'm good. I'm happy. I can sit at the beach. I like the beach for a little bit, but I don't know. I don't like it the whole time. I get too hot. I'd rather have a little bit of AC. I like Florida, but I like to be in it. like to be comfortable. (laughs) And so now shifting gears to now when you started Tweeva, what was that? What, what was that process like for you? When you like so, when you originally started? Yeah, so Tweeva was born out of the idea to market another product that we were building. As the group of the the people that I work with now, that all the partners that built Tweeva, we also built out a huge database and app and wrote a patent on um, a different business, which was tracking and organizing and ordering um, products from small businesses and distributors. So when we started to market it, we were saying, hey, well, do we go create a marketing company to build this out or do we go hire a marketing company? And so we kind of like jokingly figured out, well, could we create a product that could help us market it? So that's kind of how it was born. But it was, it was that and a combination of a few other things. Um, but, you know, it wasn't like we set out saying like, let's change TV tomorrow. You know, like I think a lot of ideas, they kind of morph and pivot as you build them. Real ones, right? This, I imagine Facebook did the same thing right they said i like create something for a school but yeah. Uh, yeah that's how it was created and i believe that um i heard i heard from i heard about tweeva where the founder of the company passed away originally and then now you're the one in control of the company well what was that what, tell me about that story yeah so the well we're all in we're all equal control you know uh owners of the company but you know i was i'm the tech guy right so i was building out the product i was uh figuring out how we can pass this data from here to there uh very very integrated into the technical aspects of it and some of the 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 marketing pieces you know i would call it the background guy right like tech background guy um and when he passed away that it was okay well what do we do how do we figure out how to bring it to market even though i had been thinking about it i just thought okay we build out a product and then somebody takes that product and brings that to market and having to go to another spot where it's like okay now we have to get put my face out there you know (laughs) and and talk about the product or two. It's just a little bit, it's a learning curve, right? I, My I other part where it's going to be out there too, but it's just, whoa, I thought this might've been somebody else's, you know? Yeah, I was, I was saying, I believe that's kind of where you develop your humor, your sense of humor and the way you, you yeah. like communicate, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like, uh, okay, let's make this fun because it's... Uh, <laughs> It's something new. It's something crazy. You know, it's not new and crazy, but you just think it's okay. I can take a little bit step back of this crazy um, building a product that because you're not following. You're not saying, okay, okay, there's a skateboard out there and I'm going to recreate the skateboard with my own logo or new new tracks. You're trying to create a brand new product. So when you say, I'm going to go create this feature, you're making a decision to spend three or four months of time finding, researching, developing, testing, right? And then possibly throwing that in the garbage. So <laughs> it's all, that's what they call the scientific method. If it works and it's great, otherwise you restructure a hypothesis. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. That is a smarter way to to say it. Yeah. We always, I always, anytime, anytime I see someone trying to, you know, figure out, and I figure it, figure something out and test that idea out. It's like, you always got to keep using the scientific method at the beginning. You form a question, create a hypothesis and then experiment it. If it works well, then yeah, that's your hypothesis proven right. Otherwise you got to go back and reformulate it again yeah. and again and again. Yes. So if, if your audience is interested in ever developing a product and then trying to create it and then bringing it to market, 
market. So there, before, let's say 10 years ago, maybe that was the way to do it because not everybody had an opinion or somebody had a Palm Pilot and the other person was, was iPhone out? Yeah, it was, right? But it wasn't his what year, what year? What year was it? I'm saying like 10 years ago, 15 okay. years ago. I mean, 10 years ago, okay, 15 years ago, I can say the iPhone was new, but 10 years ago, the iPhone was, okay, coming into its, for coming into like its coming of age period. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't as, you know, download the app and use it. It was still, you know, a little bit yeah, further away, right? I, w- I would say if it were 15 years ago, then yeah, you could say, okay, da- then to like download, download the app on our app store would be kind of like a new, a new form of lingo, but... 10 yeah. years ago then that's like that's that's I mean, commonplace did you have like, a palm pilot or a trio i mean they had apps they had an app store well we had angry birds right <laughs> i mean i'm sorry that's, angry birds that's it. So remember like that. If, remember that game back 10 years ago with angry birds mm. i do i remember the game are you saying yeah. before this one or angry birds i remember angry birds yeah yeah i remember okay so you're referring to what again the uh, trio the, app or the trio um it was a phone it was a palm pilot a phone and three things i can't Um, pilot okay so that was like blackberry and Uh, blackberry yeah i know blackberry Blackberry. and the trio were competing so before that you have the palm pilot which was just like a monochrome screen with a digital stylus no phone you know it lasted for weeks and it was just like a it's like a glorified digital watch and so those had apps though way back when i was young my dad had came i think we went to best buy not best buy circuit city or something and he's like we're gonna be organized remember what we're it's circuit city it's been a while since i've even heard that turn that that store name. They well, you got Kmart, Circuit City, Fry's Electronics, uh, Sears, Toys R Us. Those were yes, those yes. Were good days. Service merchandise was up up north in uh, New, at least New Jersey. They had a lot of electronics and stuff. But you see, he came home and he bought three Palm Pilots, and he's like, "We're all going to be organized now. We'll have a calendar." The only problem was there was no shared calendars yet. It was whatever was on yours was on this one. You, you could only sync it by dropping it into a cradle, and that would connect via serial to your computer. So this is this is aged. But yeah. back then they had apps that you would download and then install. So Apple really took that whole idea and just said, "Okay, we'll make it in the store." Or digitally you click a button it'll download right into your phone but anyway it, that was that was way back when <laughs> way back when but now yeah, now shifting gears to what to the product you're building right now with Tweeva, right um yeah. just wondering what is the what are the, some of the challenges you're facing in terms of this, in terms of getting this product out there? Well, challenges are really just, there's just a knowledge gap and a lack of a uh, hundred million dollars. I mean, those are just really the two <laughs> slightly small problems. Uh, just the first, I mean, if you talk to different generations, they don't really understand what social TV is or a local TV, ch- a local TV channel. Is that just information from the city, from the town? I It would be too expensive for me to be on it. So you're having to have a conversation about a new product. Imagine somebody walking into your business 20 years ago and saying, you have to be on this brand new site called Facebook. And you got to add pictures of your family and your kids and your business on it. And you're going to be like, what are you talking about? Right? (laughs) So until that trend is established, you're going and talking to and advertising to a crowd that doesn't necessarily understand the concept because it's a new piece of technology. So you can either throw money at it or you can throw manpower at it and just talk and build the network out. And so those are the two kind of challenges, really. I mean, tech um, can be built and tech will continue to grow. So that's not necessarily an issue or a problem, but it's just, I mean, it's like any startup. Any startup has the same thing. You're trying to educate somebody on a new idea or product. Um, But unfortunately, we have many pieces of it. I'm trying to help somebody convert their TV into into the Tweeva network. Then we're talking to small businesses uh, about it. Then I'm trying to talk to influencers influencers like hey you know hey influencer it's like hey i'm gonna go take a picture of my myself at a coffee shop and with my coffee and my butt and it's like no no no, no. don't do that right take a picture and add it to the tv of the croissant and a coffee at a coffee shop and become a content creator for the network like this is so okay yeah i just needed to know okay so my my thought process is like if i were to use tweeva i i'm just saying like let's say i like to do i like to run mm-hmm. or i like to read that's those are my two two major hobbies that i do um is it more like what i do what they do what i have to do is take a photo of myself or you know take a video and then have it streamed on tweeva and that and tweeva is primarily just doing like a promotional campaign or something like that yeah it's similar to a very basic you know campaign 
campaign is if if you wanted to advertise, let's say the podcast, and you could say, follow me or listen to one of my versions, you know, you take a picture of you in the microphone, right? And you say, subscribe to my podcast. And so you take a picture of that, you put some text on it, and you'd hit it into the network. And then all the TVs that are connected would then start to show your face, a microphone, and your podcast, and a QR code. So people could look at the TV and say, oh, I want to follow this guy. So why is it that um, your the app is like the only... Uh, let's say, let me, let me formulate this question better. So when you're... Usually this is for like typical TV, when people watching sports at a sports bar. That's what... But then you have my own advert, my own... Uh, like my own reel posted mm-hmm. on that on the network in a yeah. way yeah it would be a so separate a, tv yeah it would be a separate tv that means so why is it like the owner has to have to buy another tv just to showcase tweeba network the tweeba related advertising content if they wouldn't want to yeah some businesses they'd have no tv some businesses have five tvs so if they would want to take one of their older tvs or or one of the tvs uh and save some money turn off the cable on one of them they could bring up the tweeba network for a lot less how is it connected to these i was was gonna say how are these connected to like how is this network connected to the tv what is what is that process so the the network is connected through our tweeva box right so the tweeva box uh gets attached to the back of the tv we go hdmi into the tv and then we connect to the wi-fi so the box is constantly connecting uh to the home you know the server saying hey do i have new content what do i need to do right now and so when somebody does walk in and we can change some of the information on that tv that's how it's constantly communicating back and forth so this is not just streaming down one version to 10 million tv TVs from a satellite. This is individually controlled digital display social TV that's interactive. So how is it interactive? So it's interactive because it's two way. So if you think about the TV, if you just look over at a TV, there's nothing you can do to change it. If you have Tweeva and you have a Tweeva app on your phone and you walk into the business, the business or and, and you allow it. Some people are like against the privacy things. We think in the future, most people will be sharing this type of data. It's going to change based upon your preferences. So let's say you like running. It might say there's a running group meeting on Tuesday morning. At so, so it could be like, let's say it's like, meetup in a way so what you can do is to make like a quick advertisement about running and then say hey join us at this at this place at or at 9 a.m on saturday well that's one of the things i could also then talk to uh you know once the display is in a local wherever you get pizza or food or whatever i would find a local shoe company yeah. you know not not the big boys we're we're about the local businesses i'd find a local shoe company and say hey look do you have a small ad of walking through your store where's your running shoes let's do a 10 20 second ad and let's show that when people are interested in running or physical activity so now you have a hiker you have a a, a kayaker they're going to get those wet shoes right so that's the kind of content now the tv would change and then once they walk out then over a spirit uh, specified amount of time we would slowly take those pull those back and push the next person that walks in oh he drives a harley All right sure. leather gloves right the little jackets to protect if you fall off and the leather pants uh the helmets uh maybe gas additive for the bikes and then when he leaves same thing and then okay the nerd is walking in what are we going to show him i'll show him a usb charger he's really going to like that and i walk it's in primary- oh yeah i need one <laughs> No, it's like when you're trying to appeal Tweeba to a certain business, right? That means they're there. What the owners or whoever is running the business, what they do is showcase advertising of, that targets their uh, their demographic in a way, right? Yeah. So this is not like a centralized TV system, but a very decentralized. You can, it just like fits any kind of person and any kind of uh, personality going going forward. Yeah. Yep. That's that's the idea so that it's a little bit more interesting for you. So yeah. you walk in, you're going to say what's happening in my community. And if you walk in and if you're at the shore, you're still going to get semi-customized data. You're going to see what's happening in that town. If I go to the beach and I say, where's those little sailboats that you rent? Well, there's two miles down the road, right? Or where's a good coffee shop right over here? Uh, and then it would also show some custom stuff for me. So it's always a dynamically changing TV experience for everyone. And so where is so where is the company going right now? So the company is always looking towards the future. 
So we're trying to figure out where people are going to be using this the most. Um, and we're constantly looking towards the next piece of technology. And that's in that realm. Um, we're looking to raise capital right now also. So we are talking to venture capitals, capitalists, and angel investors to get to that next, you know, level in a start in the startup world so that we can just hit that scalability factor. Um, we've pushed our app to the store in Google. So we're constantly moving, you know, all these different channels are constantly moving up but we're really trying to become that dominant tv channel and interactive tv for everyone right yeah so how many customers do you have right now working with tweeter we are just starting in central florida so we just have just under 50 and we're keep we're you know we keep growing out outside but we're building out that first case for the investor side so they can see how this works, how many we can move from this business, let's say the chiropractor to the pizza place or from the pizza back to the chiropractor. So we're constantly checking and building new ways that we can track that data. Right. All right. So yeah, I think we're running low on time, but um, let me ask you this one final question before we end this uh, conversation. So what would you advise anyone, any young entrepreneurs or anyone looking to get something going with their venture? I, the first thing that I would do is if you're trying to start something, is this like a new idea or a, or a new idea, existing anything? idea, anything, anything, connect with other nerds. <laughs> if you're in the <laughs> entrepreneurial world, <laughs> always the nerds. Can, yeah. You connect with other people either and in, in all levels. So we, as the group that we started Tweeva with, it would have really helped to talk to a venture capital when we started, before we even started to write code, it would have been, you know, a really smart idea to figure out all the points we would need in a year and a half to get to that venture capital. So figure out your goals, what you want, and then just go to the talk to those people before you even open the business and just say, what's the requirements so that you can build out a timetable and just reverse it from there. I got to work this many hours a day. And then in a year and a half, you'll be so much further than saying, okay, it's a great idea. I'll start working in it because focused is so much better than broad in the startup world, right? Yeah. So that would be my, that's the best piece of advice I'll leave is connect with others and be focused. All right, cool, David. Thank you so much for coming on the next in time podcast and really looking forward to seeing how Twiwa will change the paradigm of television and media thanks for having me it was a lot of fun we'll definitely have to jump back in in the future and uh, give you an update yeah we'll definitely need another recording because i really feel there is i like to you know ask you more questions <laughs> awesome all right thanks Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Next in Time podcast. We hope you enjoyed diving into the intriguing vision of our guest today. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media to stay updated on future episodes. If you have any suggestions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.